welcome back to MCM Outdoors. Welcome to anyone that's new to the channel. Check out the back catalogue if you want. But welcome to this changeable day on the Lancashire Moors. I've come out for a solo wild camp just to get away from it all and enjoy the, the lovely barren solitude of the moors. I'm heading up to the location. I won't disclose the exact spot, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's all about the experience, this one. It's gonna be sort of less gear oriented and um, more about just enjoying the actual experience and what I enjoy about it. Those of you that are new to the channel and that you're just watching the newer kind of videos, uh, you might think that some of the gear I use is more high end a lot of the time and out of the reach of some people who might just be starting out and you know don't have that kind of budget. So I don't want to give the impression that that's always been the case. It hasn't and um, you know keep yourself out for a reasonable price with not very much outlay. There's plenty of videos out there, you know, from good YouTube channels all about the outdoors and wild camping, showing that you don't need to spend a fortune to come out and enjoy it. So, quick scenery check. We're looking to Winter Hill with the mast, where I was with Ant and Tony a couple of days ago. I've not brought the drone along on this one, but I am pleased to tell you that there is a stowaway in my rucksack, weighing it down, the angry haggis. Anyway, we're gonna press on to the camp location and I will bring you back. Right, it's time to open the first beer. First beer, and it's gonna be this. It's gonna be the oatmeal stout. The one I wanna savour the most, I'll open first. Let's do it out here. Oh, nice. Oh. It's like Guinness, but more vanilla. You can taste the oats, the oatmeal in it. That's lovely, that. What a beer to have whilst looking out at that. Pleased to announce he's in some kind of weird state of sleep at the moment. He's been drinking whiskey and iron brew. He sleeps with his eyes open, but uh, the angry haggis. Hopefully he's going to wake up later and add a bit to the video. It's nice and warm and uh, he acts as a bit of a guard dog in the tent really. Just leave him outside in the vestibule. Anyone comes near us, 
that'll have him. Literally just has anyone. So yeah, he's got razor sharp teeth under there. So don't mess with him. You can see in the dark as well. You see those big pupils, they let all the light in, so the angry haggis in his natural environment. And that's a rolling boil. So we've got this little bit of a seat. I think other people come to this spot. Luckily it's looked after. And uh, I'm not publicizing the location. I'm pleased to announce, I had some growling noises coming out of my pocket. The angry haggis, he's here. And he's gonna accompany me as I enjoy my uh, can of ICAT DDH IPA from the Salt Brewery. It's absolutely freezing. The sun's obviously just come out from behind those clouds, but it's a really cold wind. Um, so yeah, we won't be staying out here for, for too long. Whoa, it's bad behavior from this haggis. It's 8% this, you don't need many of them. I've had them before on other camps and Oh, very strong. You want to try some? Okay. What do you think? Nice. There you go. The Angry Haggis is a fan. <laughs> it's, it's not about the tent or the rucksack or you know, your sleep mat. Obviously, you're going to want a bit of comfort. And you need to keep warm but none of that really matters whether you've got a 60 quid 70 quid tent by OEX or you've got a 700 or insofar as the black label solo 900 pound tent in some cases it doesn't really matter because it still enables you to come out and enjoy this the only difference being in the wilder weather you know the horrendous wind you've got a decent tent four season tent designed to withstand some tougher conditions but for the most part if you're just starting off in wild camping you're probably not going to want to be going out in conditions like that it's all about enjoying yourself and having a nice time and being comfortable and therefore wanting to go and do it again so but what I like to do is obviously not talk to haggis but just put him there for now I like to just sit and watch the sky listen to the soundtrack the wind skylarks curlew there's a lot of lapwing about now at this time of year you know, looking on the horizon, I'll turn you around in a minute. The windmills, or the wind turbines. And just picking out the farmhouses. And the ever-changing sky. They're all going all poetic. That's what I like. Hits the reset button. By the time you go back home. You know, feeling a bit wet and lack of sleep. Because you don't have the best night sleep in tents. You don't. I'm a light sleeper anyway, so... You're always a lot more tired, but the memories you make and the experience you have is invaluable. And you're making memories. 
in the great outdoors. I'd much rather watch that sky than rubbish television, reality TV and absolute dross. This, for me, is what it's all about. Getting back to basics, reconnecting with nature and the outdoors, which sadly, I think a lot of humanity seems to have lost that link to the outdoors. We've just become more and more pulled away by technology and mod cons and convenience and people. People seem to have lost that connection with nature and the great outdoors. And I think a lot of people refound it during lockdown because there was nothing else to do because everything was shut. And it'll be interesting to see how many people have found that and will retain it and keep going out or will they drift back away and into you know the fast paced te technological rat race where you don't make time for the outdoors and to do things like this I don't know I'm rambling away I'm just watching a kestrel now hovering looking for prey and I'm finding my seat nice and comfortable. The great outdoors. You have a little seat there. And yeah, look at this. I'm sat out, looking across everything, looking across the great hill. Oh, it's absolutely freezing, but what a little spot this is. Uh, the sun had to come out. It's got little beer holders in the wall. <laughs> great. Absolutely Baltic, but I've seen a few spots over there as well. Yeah, I've done that walk a lot, I love it. But when you get this different perspective, picked out quite a few likely looking spots there. But what a night! But it's very, very cold, sort of northwesterly wind, bitingly cold. What's that? No, not now. Who wants to go to Blackpool and eat donuts. Right, hopefully I'm in shot, if I'm not, well, I'm in a small confined space so I'm just doing the best I can. Anyway, in this edition of Tales from the Tent, I'm going to tell you my scariest experience I've ever had when I've been wild camping. Now, I've been wild camping for many years now, many, many years, and for the most part, pretty confident, don't get scared. You know, I'm reasonably capable of handling myself. So, other humans don't really bother me. 
Now, going back to early 2017, I, um, I treat myself to a Hilleberg solo, a um, couple of crappy life events, so I thought, you know, fresh start, treat myself to this new tent, and so I've wanted it for years, and I headed out on its maiden voyage um, in the Peak District, well, near Macclesfield actually, to a place called Shining Tor, and it was its maiden voyage. Let's get some canty. Part up. It was, a, it was a nice sunny afternoon. Not too dissimilar to today, the weather we've had today. Headed off up Shining Tor. First time I've been there. And it was blowing a gale. I'll leave a link to that video above. But I set my tent up, I was really excited. A brand new tent. Rolls Royce tents, a Hilleberg, and it was great. Really enjoyed myself. I had something to eat, a couple of beers, not too many, before people say, I was just imagining things, not too many, couple of beers, and um, I settled back into the tent as it got dark, and the wind slowly began to drop. I remember looking out toward Manchester Airport and you could see the flight path. You see the line of planes landing and taking off on the other runways in the, in the far distance. So it was quite nice to look out to. And eventually drifted off to sleep in my new tent. All was well. And then, must have been about 2, 3 in the morning. Anyone that goes wild camping will know. If you've had a few beers, it's gold, you need a wee. So, unless you've got some kind of intent bottle situation going on, which I never have, doesn't appeal to me, you've got to get out your warm sleeping bag, unzip your inner, which is nice and warm, it's built up a bit of heat, and I remember putting my boots on, taking hold of the zip and there was like this eerie calm like this eerie stillness and you could almost cut the atmosphere with a knife I just thought something's not right took hold of the zip slowly unzipped the fly sheet it's pitch black not a breath of wind and remember turning my torch on to look out into the darkness and as soon as I illuminated my head torch it was just a fog of mist it's like thick mist swirling mist and when I turned my torch on you could see the individual particles were like thick it's like smoke it was just silent I just had a feeling something's not right. So, crept out of the inner and stood up and there was not a sound. The air was like still, deadly still. So, stand up and I just had this sixth sense. I thought, someone's here. There's someone here. And it was this horrible feeling. And the hairs on the back of my neck genuinely started standing up. So it was about half past two in the morning. Have a wee. And as I'm doing it, I'm looking out with my head torch into the mist. And I can't see, just about see, my hand in front of my face. And all of a sudden... As I'm looking towards the trig point of Shining Tor, just to the left of it was this dark silhouette. I'm deadly serious. Even talking about it now makes me feel scared. And there was this horrible, 
dark, slender silhouette standing to the left of the trig point. And it was quiet. And there's particles of mist swirling in my head torch. And I could see this thing just stood. And it was like the shape of this elongated shape. I swear to God. And I felt sick, almost froze with fear. Finished what I was doing. And the hardest part was turning my back on whatever was looking at me. And that feeling of turning around 180 degrees and turning my back on that threat, what I thought, whatever was looking at me, every ounce of my body <laughs> was telling me to scream, do something. I have never got back into my tent so quickly. And those few seconds where my back was turned and this hideous silhouette in the deathly silent night with the mist stood to the left of the trig, whatever it was, I'm telling you 100% my body was telling me there's something bad there. Got back into my tent, zipped it up as quick as I could, straight into the inner. I put the sleeping bag over my head and I was absolutely terrified. That's never, ever happened to me anywhere else. And I'm not making up. That's absolutely gospel true. Whatever that was on Shining Tour that night, it wasn't good. And that's the only time ever that I've been wild camping and felt afraid. So what that noise is. It's like this weird noise. Anyway. I wanted to share that. And the spooky tales from the tent. That's absolute gospel. What the hell is that? Making that noise. It's like a curlew, but much lower pitched. getting closer Oi that play like all around
What's that? Right folks, quick sight check. I always show it, I like to show it on every video. Just a patch of flattened grass. Make sure you've not left any pegs, even ends or bags, absolutely anything. And just make sure the site, which it is, is exactly how it was when you arrived. If you've enjoyed this, give it a quick thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Check out the other channels if you're interested in wild camping. Uh, camping equipment and the outdoors if you're on instagram mcm outdoors is also come and check us out on there and there's a facebook group if anyone's interested in joining that just for some tips and advice in a friendly and welcoming environment argument free as well so i've had a cracking time reset the batteries i've got to go home now clean off the gear let the tent dry and get ready for another adventure of course i'll bring the camera along and i'll see you there Go and enjoy the great outdoors, leave no trace, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.